in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Engineering Plasticity, Chapter 1, Introduction, Part 11. In this slide, we are going to solve some problems. And um, the problem we are dealing with is a, is a adiabatic temperature rise during the forming operation. If you remember, in previous slides, I talked about uh, uh, plastic deformation, and I said that when we have plastic deformation, most of the energy is dissipated as heat, and only a small percentage, about 5%, is spent for the deformation itself. Uh, here we are going to see how much uh, energy is released and how much energy is dissipated as heat and how it increases the temperature of the process. Okay? And we are going to use the volume constancy to solve this problem and also some other problems after this. Now consider uh, a simple operation like uh, compression of a cylindrical block like this. Here we have a cylinder, uh, initial area A0, initial height H0, and we are going to compress it with the pressure P uh, to a final area, cross-section area of A, and shorten it to a length of H. Now consider that uh, for this operation, the material obeys this relation. Sigma is equal B epsilon to the power of N. This is the governing equation. Now, for a simple compression or tensile test, we have a curve like that. Sigma versus epsilon, and the behavior is like that. If we get a, a small uh, element on the a small element of the area under the curve and we call it dw dw sigma d epsilon because this is sigma and this is d epsilon sigma times d epsilon is dw that is work done on or energy okay um, it is work done or energy because uh, sigma is F over A and epsilon is DL over L. So F times DL becomes work and work is the same as energy. Therefore, if we integrate DW, uh, we get this integration of sigma times D epsilon. And uh, work done, W, is A0, H0, DW, because this DW, as I mentioned here, is a specific work, is the work divided by volume, because if you put F over A here and DL over L here, on the top you get F times DL, and on the bottom you get uh, A times L, A times L is equal to volume. Therefore, this is a specific work done, which is small w. So the big w, which is the work done, we must multiply it by a0, h0. This integral, we must multiply it by the volume. So a0, h0 times sigma d epsilon, and integration is between 0 and epsilon. Then here uh, we put this relationship. Instead of sigma, we put B times epsilon to the power of N, because this is the governing equation for this curve, right? It's an empirical equation. And uh, we substitute for sigma in here, so we get B epsilon to the power of N, B epsilon to the power of N, D epsilon, and then if we integrate this, because B is constant, comes out, 
an epsilon to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Um, the limits are 0 and epsilon. Okay, so we get that. And then a0, h0, b, epsilon to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. And if we put 0 here, we get 0. Therefore, this is what we get. For what? For W, which is work done for the energy under the curve. Because we are after that, you know. We want to know how much deformation. For instance, if the deformation is up to here, then the energy needed to do that deformation is the area under the curve. That's why we are calculating this. On the other hand, epsilon is ln h0 to h, because here, unlike the tensile test, which we measure the change in length, um, and length is increased, here we, change in, we measure the change in length, but length is decreased. Therefore, ln h0 to h, and, and we substitute here for epsilon. So we get a0, h0, b is a constant. Instead of epsilon, we put ln, ln h0 to h to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. And uh, here, uh, assuming complete conversion of plastic work into heat. Why we say complete conversion? Because I said most of the work converts to heat, not all of it. But here, uh, for the sake of uh, simplicity, we consider this. But uh, if we want to uh, get the real value, maybe we multiply this by um, 0.95, because only 5% of this work goes into deformation. 95% releases as heat. Now, conversion, uh, relationship is like that. A0, H0 is the volume. Rho is the density. C is the specific heat. Delta T is the temperature rise. And J is a, is a conversion factor which I explained. And this is the work. So this relationship means that we are converting this mechanical work which is in term of plastic deformation into the heat okay this is just a conversion of one energy into another energy because this is what happens in reality and this j we call it mechanical equivalent okay mechanical equivalent so uh, this is a conversion factor for converting heat to mechanical work. Now, for pure aluminium compressed at room temperature, we have rho, which is density, is equal to 0 0.0975 pound force per inch cube. Specific heat is 0.21 BTU over pound force degree Fahrenheit. And J, which is mechanical equivalent of heat is 1400 foot pound force per BTU. You can see in the unit here that foot pound force is the mechanical work and BTU is energy, heat energy. Okay, that's the unit of heat in uh, British units and this is the units of work in British units. Therefore, if we multiply this by 1400, we get this mechanical work. Or if we divide this mechanical work by this 1400, we get BTU. And why is the uh, yield strength of uh, aluminium? And let's uh, take ln H0 to H as 0.7. Okay, that's the that's the strain which has been done. It's 0 to H. We've taken it as 0.7 ln. And uh, here 
we can calculate delta theta which is the temperature rise due to this uh, deformation due to this deformation so if we divide all of that by all of that we get j we get delta theta sorry we get delta theta so y divided by j rho c ln h0 to h a0 h0 cancel out and therefore delta theta temperature rise is about 36 degree c remember in one of these slides when i was talking about uh, uh, point of reversal i said that uh, due to some deformation the temperature increases and this increase in temperature is such that uh, the material becomes softer and that's why we get softening as we make more deformation and increase the strain okay instead of getting more stress we get less stress it softens it doesn't harden because uh, due to this increase in temperature of course this increase in temperature must be high enough to soften the material and in that curve in that slide which i explained to you because the material already had about 1000 degrees c uh, uh, temperature the temperature was 1000 degrees c that's why an increase in temperature a small increase in temperature made the material soft at that strain rate of course at higher strain rates it didn't happen so that's how you calculate uh, temperature rise due to deformation <clears throat> now another example that we can solve by using uh, volume constancy and it is a very complicated problem if you want to solve this problem that I'm going to explain to you by uh, relationships you learned in the strengths of material you won't be able to solve it if you want to solve this problem by finite element method it will take you a long time to do it because you have to model uh, different parts of the material and it's a dynamic uh, problem it has uh, many boundary conditions and difficult problem to solve so I'm going to solve this here with very simple method using only volume constants okay so what is the problem problem is this low speed plate perforation or hole flange that is the plate that is the drift or the tool we are using and it moves with a higher speed like a bullet and it goes through this plate okay. edges of this uh, plate when the hole is made come out and form something like a flange perforation means making a hole in a plate okay so we can see that this plate has a uh, thickness of H0 and it's moving this drift is moving towards the plate now it says determine the depths of perforation if the radius of the drift is B0 radius of this drift is B0 2B0 is the diameter of the drift and we want to know what depths of perforation if we make this hole and these edges come out how much is the depth of perforation okay now this is hole flanging I mean this plate is perforating through the plate and making uh, making a hole or maybe we have a smaller hole and we push through this hole to make a flange that is the difference between plate perforation and hole flange because plate perforation there is no hole in the plate we make the hole with the edge of this drift and uh, push through to make the hole flanging but here hole flanging there is already an, a hole in the plate 
so we don't make the hole we just make the hole flanging we push through the drift and these come out and hole flanging is made now this is what we are going to do this is the plate it's a circular plate that is the uh, front of the uh, hole okay and um, let's see what we have here this is the plate this is uh, after the hole flanging okay either we have perforated the plate or there was an initial hole uh, it doesn't matter we have perforated it and hole flanging has uh, occurred so this is hole flanging you know it's like a flange like that now it's this is h0 this is b0 as given in the problem and then this is the plate so um, that's the plate diameter we don't know how much it is h0 is the thickness of the plate and we are going to see um, what happens to an element of of um, of the plate when it is uh, perforated okay we have an element of the plate here because this is the plate the original plate okay original plate. that is the element okay this element has uh, width ds and uh, this dimension is h0 and from the center of the drift the distance is d is s okay distance is s and the flange height is h we want to find out how much h is okay right now we are saying that this element which we have taken on the original plate if you look at it here these lines go back to here to show you this uh, original element this is the original element this yellow one yellow one is the element da 2 p 2 pi s ds okay s is this distance ds is the dimension of the element okay dimension of the element. element is circular now this element we go goes to here goes to there and uh, due to volume constancy we can find out some relationships which helps us now the first relationship is this 2 pi s ds times h0 if I go back here again 2 pi s ds is the area of this yellow element okay 2 pi s ds Now, times H0, H0 is the uh, thickness of the plate, gives the volume of the element. That is the volume of the yellow element in the previous uh, slide. What happens to this? It comes and moves there, okay, as we make a hole in the, in the plate and make this flange. This material goes there because all the material here go there. You know all the material here because this is a circular thing this is circular okay cylindrical and this circular plate all of it has gone to form this flange which is a circular cylinder okay so all the material here must have gone to here because we cannot lose any material or gain any so volume is constant this part has not changed the part that has changed is this one this part okay so 2 pi s ds h0 which is the volume of the element goes somewhere here we don't know where it is z distance z from here so if we call this distance dz then we have 2 pi times dz times b0 b0 is the internal uh, radius of this cylinder here so 2 pi b0 
is the is this is this area circular area times dz times dz 2 pi b0 is this circular element times dz gives the uh, area and times h which is this distance this distance uh, almost gives this volume because we have this gradient here but we um, assume that this is a straight line and uh, so this volume is equal to this one right so from volume constancy we have obtained this relationship also from volume constancy we have this relationship we know that all the strains summed up together must be zero because when you have deformation in one direction uh, you have you can have deformation in three directions right because we don't have any uh, limits to the deformation in any of these direction one two and three okay three principal directions so if you have one uh, deformation in epsilon one one in epsilon two and the other one in epsilon three the sum of this must be zero otherwise the volume won't be constant okay this is the volume constancy relationship now in here uh, Epsilon 1 is epsilon theta, epsilon 2 is epsilon t, thickness, and epsilon 3 is epsilon r, due to the geometry of this shape. Okay, and epsilon theta is B0 over S for this element, because B0 is the final, final position, S is the original position that is the original position that is the final position ln h over h0 is epsilon t in the t direction that was in the uh, theta direction in the t direction okay what we have finally is h that is h and what we had originally was h0 h0 this was, was this this h0 and in the radial direction what we have now is dz in the radial direction and what we had originally in the radial direction ds okay so this should be equal to zero so from these we can also obtain a relationship but before we do that we can make an as another assumption to uh, get to simplify this problem assuming uniaxial tensile hoop stress uniaxial tensile hoop stress because this drift is doing the performation perforation uh, we assume that there is only a tensile hoop stress here tensile hoop stress hoop stress you know is a circular stress or is a circumferential stress if we assume that then it means that we have only one uh, stress like a uniaxial stress so uh, stresses in other directions are zero sigma t and sigma r are equal to zero this is assumption we make and this assumption is almost correct because what we are applying here is a stress in the hoop direction we are not um, applying any stress in that direction or in that direction so t and r are zero if sigma t and sigma r is zero then epsilon t is equal to epsilon r and from there i write this again and from there we get this because epsilon t is ln h over h0 and epsilon r is ln dz over ds so from this this relationship that relationship we get h over h0 dz over ds and then uh, we can write this h over h0 to the power of 2 is s over b0 if we put this if we put this in here we get this okay we get this 
and therefore ds over dz is equal to root b0 over s from these relationships okay from these relationships we get these and uh, okay uh, so these are what we obtain only from the volume constancy and um, now we can integrate do the integration because we took an element just an element now if we integrate between zero s equal to zero to b zero okay zero is here to b zero because this element is somewhere in between so we want from here to there that is zero to b zero so we integrate between zero to b zero here root s ds ds square root of s and uh, dz square root of b0 integrate between 0 and uh, h of course h is this because uh, that is the direction of z so dz was here so we want to take 0 to h and uh, we integrate this and after integration uh, and simplification we get this h is equal to two thirds of b0 now I challenge you to do a final element a solution for this okay go to the final element uh, program and model this you know modeling these are very difficult and perforate it to see whether you can obtain that but in a matter of minutes we obtain this so this is the miracle of plasticity engineering plasticity you see it makes the problems very simple and it gives you some solutions that you can never get with any other methods you know finite element method i'm sure you have to spend hours to get this but in a matter of minutes i got you this okay Now here we want to see how these empirical equations um, uh, are useful. So what do we have here? If we have the empirical equations of true stress natural strain curve, sigma is equal to a prime epsilon to the power of n, d sigma to d epsilon is equal to sigma, that is for um, when the necking starts that is the stability point that is for the maximum point on the uh, f delta curve uh, so if this is sigma if this is sigma and d sigma to d epsilon is equal to sigma for the stability point then we put sigma in here we put sigma in here we get d sigma d epsilon and uh, so d sigma d epsilon is a prime epsilon to the power of n minus 1 n times this that is just differentiating sigma relative to epsilon and of course this sigma is equal to that therefore if we put that equal to that a prime epsilon to the power of n cancel out and we get an n and epsilon to the power of minus one okay so epsilon is equal to n so that is uh, very important you know what does it mean it means that for the stability point for the necking to start we must go as far as epsilon equal to n if we go a bit further than epsilon equal to n if epsilon is greater than n it means that necking starts and uh, it becomes unstable you know the deformation goes haywire it deforms without control so uh, that is a very important point of course we assume that the first that uh, sigma is equal to a prime epsilon epsilon to the power of n this is uh, an empirical equation 
for the behavior of the material. We assume this. Uh, maybe the material we use doesn't obey this uh, equation. It will, uh, another equation will govern the behavior. But here we have assumed that this will govern the behavior of the material. If this is so, then the stability condition is this, and we get that. This is a stability condition. This means that. Because this is a stability condition, but it, it's not useful. How can we use this for the material? But we can use this for the material. Because we say that if you deform it more than this value, it will go out of control. It's unstable. But if you deform it less than this, it is stable. So this is very useful. Okay? Now, if we have the imperial equation of true stress, engineering stress, curve, that is true stress, natural strain, that, but here true stress, engineering strain, it's different from that. Then we showed before that d sigma to d e is 1 over 1 plus e for the stability point. Okay, uh, so here again we have to have d sigma d e, uh, we differentiate this, we get d sigma d e is equal to b times m e to the power of m minus 1. And uh, d sigma to d e is 1 over 1 plus e, so 1 over 1 plus e is equal to that, right? And then from here we get e is equal to m over 1 minus m. Again, this is the value, this is a number, because m has a number, n has a number. So we get a different value here than here, because we have used uh, engineering strain. Here is another problem that uh, we are going to solve using volume constancy equation. It's a pin joint two bar truss uh, for which we want to find the maximum load. When we say that we want to find the maximum load, it means that uh, maximum load before failure. Because you can design this kind of things in two ways. One is that uh, you use the usual strengths of material relationships and you design for elastic deformation. It means that you don't reach yield. Another one is the plasticity way, which you design using the uh, plastic deformation capacity of the structure. In other words, you pass the yield point. You pass the yield point, but you don't reach the failure. It means that you must go up to the UTS, just before UTS, so that uh, before necking starts, you stop the load. So it means that maximum load in here is at the point of instability. Because point of instability, if you pass it, if you pass the point of instability, then you go through the necking and everything is out of control and uh, the deformation continues uh, until failure. But uh, here we want a maximum load, so that's what I mean. We need W for the point of uh, instability. And that is the point of instability. That is the uh, strain, maximum strain at the point of instability. We obtained this before in previous slides. And um, so we want that much of deformation, not more than that. For this much of deformation, we can obtain W, and that would be the maximum load permissible. Okay. Uh, now, we first of all, assume a material law like that, because we use this to obtain that uh, in previous slides. And if the original shape is like that, L0, L0, and we have uh, this uh, uh, pin joint, C, then uh, we have after the formation we have uh, point C increased uh, in length 
come to this part otherwise AC is increased in length and A and CB is increased in length and uh, the length originally was L0 and after increase is L0 over 1 minus M the angle theta also clearly decreases this angle is greater than this angle because the lengths of the triangles have been increased and so we have here P is equal to A times sigma A is the original length is the current length of this truss or bar and uh, sigma is the stress applied to uh, AC and BC A is the cross-sectional area of AC and BC um, and then uh, E which is uh, strain is equal to the change in length divided by length we can write it in this way uh, we have volume constancy therefore A0 L0 which is the original uh, volume of one of these bars must be equal to the volume of the bar after the formation so AL is the volume after the formation A0 L0 volume before the formation they must be equal and equal to constant therefore from here we can get a relationship between A and A0 and uh, from this relationship we have L over L0 equal to E plus 1 Therefore, this L0 over L, we can get it from here and substitute for it. Therefore, A is equal to A0, 1 over 1 plus E. And then we substitute for here, for A in here. P is equal to A times sigma. Therefore, uh, sigma A0, 1 over 1 plus E substituted from here so these are the relationship obtained in the previous slide now uh, we substitute for E because E equal to M divided by 1 minus M is that point of instability which I talked about in previous slide and we want the maximum load so we want the max maximum deformation we put the maximum deformation in here and we get P equal to this uh, so that is the maximum load because we put the maximum deformation there and the total load is 2P times cos theta and therefore uh, also cos theta we can uh, obtain from this arrangement in here which is uh, this line divided by this line cos theta this line of course is this line uh, to the power of 2 plus this line to the power of 2 uh, square root so uh, square root of that divided by that we get cos theta and we substitute um, cos theta here and P in here and we get W which is the maximum load okay so this is this is what uh, I meant by plastic deformation capacity this bar has a capacity of bearing a higher load than the one we usually calculate in the strength of material due to the plastic the formation capacity of the bar of course we don't need to go as much as the, this uh, value for the deformation you know we don't have to go up to the point of instability we can if, if we want to use some safety factor then we can use a value less than this you know half of this or two-thirds of this and we will be sure that uh, no deformation will occur and also the bars carry out the maximum possible load now we have finished the, the for introduction chapter one and uh, 
I hope you have enjoyed this chapter. We will start chapter two uh, in the next session, which will be about stress.